Great. Now you can go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've looked at the document that uh, has been provided and I've uh, read about it, but uh, I only I have one concern or rather a question. Uh, the first one is about the data because I, I see the only data that has been provided is the Amharic one. Uh, will we be using only that? And then the second question is trying to I'm trying to figure out how uh, both uh, using uh, uh, Apache Kafka marries in with uh, how with making the the with actually completing uh, this week's task. So I'm not really clear on how we're supposed to do that. Really, are we supposed to key in the a text and get a, and receive an audio and make an audio out of it, or how how that is going to happen? Really, yeah. Great. So the first one for Swahili, um, definitely we will provide the Swahili X corps. It's just that I don't know. I didn't. I don't know on top of my head a text corps that is large enough um, to provide. I am sure there is. So if you know, so the point, but you understood what we want to do, right? We want to we want to create an a text to speech training set and for that we we start from an existing textual corps this is very easy to find like there are many for example um what we will provide for amharic will be like millions of kind of statements or sentences that are collected from diverse sites like news uh, social media uh, literature politics law and all that, and I'm sure you will find in Kenya and in other places where they speak Swahili, there is definitely. So if you know, please suggest us. But that is not the particular. Like it doesn't matter. So what do you want to provide? It's like because the current project is not about producing that data. It's producing the backend, and the backend basically will be kind of orchestrating the entire. It will be an API type that it will be called. So the the kind of the uh, the app or the web part will just be like plugin. It will just be connecting to the Kafka to fetch and basically um, as it will be like fetching some text or an, with some ID, and then will turn back the audio file that's recorded uh, by the browser or by the source back to the Kafka. And there is definitely, of course, you want to handle that 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 engine. Um, so the whole project is not about you worrying. It's of course you need to build it just that that element. Just simple example. That's why you start the task one, not mistaken, I should is that in task one that um yeah. Yeah, so it says in task one, plan your work. And the second element is build or simulate um, a Kafka event source for the text corps. And yeah, it's kind of about what is streaming and all that I provided just what you should read that one. But then the examples there. So for example, for image, you have it in the first example that's keeping your ML model in shape with Kafka, Airflow and ML flow. And then real-time analytics dashboard again, and then the Kafka Spark Node.js would give you another example where like the Node.js becomes like the display. Um, but then yeah, there are a few of them that in that example, especially the traffic data, whatever, that, that gives you the idea how you connect from a browser. In the future, not this part of the project, someone will build an app that will gamify the front end such that people just read it and kind of like speak that you show them a text which um and they read it and then you basically just so that's that's basically the engine that you're building so whichever language it is it doesn't matter for now but definitely we want to do it so we will we will get it also for swelly the text corps and i'm sure some of you already probably know if you do so please just let me know or uh, you know, just um, let us know how to add it. But we will find and put it. But it's not the critical component. That's why we just started from something that 
that's already existing in Cree, uh, that I know. But it will be for both. At least the project will be for both. But the actual implementation doesn't depend on a language. Is that clear for the first part, Jakinda? Yeah, that is clear for the first part. Okay, and the second part is, what was your first second part? Because I want the second part other people to ask. Can you ask it again? Uh, was I was about asking for the second Kafka. part. Uh, I wanted to know how, yeah, how Kafka is going to marry with the, the how, how they're going to like combine with the project because I understand that uh, I'm still little uh, a little bit confused on how we're going to implement that on on the project, like on a, on an overview uh, kind of perspective. Great. So, who wants to practice again? providing some support as well as speaking, especially if you haven't spoken before, take this opportunity and every opportunity that's coming, you know, even if you're not confident, just unmute, you know, kind of raise your hand, even by mistake, and then let's force you to speak. spoken or answered in one week. You know yourself, so in a nicer stand-ups or any meeting, is there anyone? And if you do so, please raise your hand while Sam is, I, I would give the opportunity to Sam now, but please raise your hand, even if you don't know what it is about. Just raise your hand so that I can call you. Sam, go on. Okay, as I understand it, we're going to build a pipeline that's going to take all of our submissions, basically the recordings for people reading the transcriptions, and then trigger Kafka for, uh, I don't know, for some sort of pooling or something, and then we use Airflow for our processing. And inside of that Airflow processes, we're going to use Spark for Processing obviously processing the data and saving it to our uh, storage. I think it's uh, supposed to be an AWS S3 bucket. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And that's right. so good attempt. How I think. Yeah. So good attempt. Anyone to explain again? I haven't seen. It is a request, and I was expecting to see hands. At least you could do that. It means, and I assume that everybody has spoken in the last one week. I think if you if you are not, whatever it is, just raise your hand if you haven't spoken. I will make it easier for you. Just I will help you to ask it, or I will help you just to answer it, even if you don't know it. But my first question to raise your hand is not about answering or asking. If you haven't spoken in the last one week. Please raise your hand. Um, and then Milky, in the meantime. Uh, hello, should I go? Hello. Yeah, go on. Uh, OK. It's more of a question. Um, <clears throat> I was researching about the, the Kafka, Kafka impl implementations. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the standard one is implemented in Java, I think. But the, but the Confluent has uh, other API, API type of uh, interaction for other language like Python. And uh, I was wondering if we, uh, if we can use this Python uh, packaging packaged modules to create the Kafka <coughs> Kafka instance and uh, deal with all the requests that we need, like creating the topic, uh, creating the producers, and uh, uh, sending and uh, getting the data. <clears throat> yep, absolutely, you can. And I think yeah, some of the references I posted are built out of yeah using Python um, integration. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So is that yeah, is that is that? Do you have further explanation or question, or are you finished? 
Uh, no, I was uh, haggling with with one of the resources that was linked. Like, it shows the step how to build and uh, initialize the Kafka instance on the AWS instance or any yeah. Linux-based uh, system. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, why should we go through all that? Uh, why should we bother with that? That was my question. If we, if there was a, a, a Python package that already does that in the first place. Um, I think it's it's most of the time, absolutely, even for, for us, it's how we wanted to provide service for you. And so we wanted to just for you to build it. Even, you know, even if it's a Python package, you still have mm -hmm. to maintain and know and one thing you shouldn't forget is that you sometimes need to maintain it and to maintain something you need to know how it's actually installed and how the normal the different procedures to install you may not find exactly that but whether it's python whether it's bash script whether it's you know something else the flow is the same that you need to set up zookeeper you need to set up Kafka, you need to set up this and you need to set up broker, you need to set up that. And in any way that is relevant to know how something is set up. So that if something doesn't work, you know, or how do you get the IP address or the address of like the basically, let's say, the um, source or, you know, from to which you can actually send the stream or also the kind of the the consumer gets from the pipe. So knowing will help. So in any way, that's important. Whatever tool you use, you need to know just the, the bare setup, even if you don't do it. Because it will, get, it will give you the, more than reading, it will give you exactly, OK, that's how I would set up in the absence of anything. Or if it's set up in this way, I will maintain it this way. So it will give you that, that kind of confidence knowing the separations. But we might even provide you, so right now, what we are settled is that we might just provide you what is, in AWS, there is a, a managed Kafka service, we might be commissioning that. And so you probably don't need to set up that, but you need to still set up all the other stuff. No, okay. Thank you. Okay, great. So I have I have seen okay Zalalem I will give you but I've seen Sibitinda and Fumbani and and someone else if they have, if you have raised already your hand please keep it raising because while the discussion it might forget so again I haven't I'm really asking people who haven't spoken in the last one week I want you to keep raising your hand so that I want to just ask you something and you know you have that that at least it's no more that you will not go two weeks without speaking. Okay, Zalalem. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have tried to read uh, the document. Is, is your voice very silent only to me or to everyone? Okay, hello. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah, now, now it's fine. Okay. Uh, I've tried to read the document. And I'm still somewhat confused about each service, each the what Kafka, Airflow, and Spark individually do. But my understanding is that uh, Kafka is like, it's just like an event uh, streaming. So maybe I think when an event where we, when we add some data, or as soon as uh, Kafka notices that there is a specific data, I think it will add it. If you have an automated maybe training, let me say training, uh, place or uh, automatic machine learning uh, training pipeline. I think it will add it. And Airflow is like, uh, I think it's a scheduling platform, task, task scheduling. So my understanding is that maybe we give it a time range to try and see if there is additional data maybe that has come. So but I think their tasks are a little bit confused for me right now. I think that they share some tasks, so I'm not clear about which okay, one that great. what. Great. I think that's a good question. I think that um, if anyone, anyone, I will give the next three, whether it's you have question or whether you have 
uh, you want to answer and then after that I will try to answer the, uh, the, the parts that are not answered so I will get back to that so I will give to Fumbani then Yerusalem the in that order so here's uh, Fumbani Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. So uh, I have a question. Uh, the first one is related to what uh, Zaharem was saying. I also don't really understand what Kafka does, but um, when I was trying to read about installing Kafka, there were most of the most of the most of the websites were doing it on Linux. So I was just wondering, like, if we have like uh, AWS to use it or like is it not really hard is it not hard installing it on windows so if so can we just use the AWS instance that, instances that we had last time for this project or like how can we go about it that's my okay question. great thanks i will um i will we will try to address if anyone hasn't addressed that question Jerusalem. Okay, hi. Uh, good hi. afternoon. Okay, uh, starting from the given task, I'm not sure if I understood it clearly, but I just tried to relate it from the weak force uh, task. That is, the dashboard that I make it was, uh, was uh, it was just receives audio from uh, clients and just downloads it in storage, uh, just in the desktop store, it was actually in my local computer, and then it transcribes it and gives uh, the output back to the dashboard. So I don't know if this um, challenge is related to that or not, but I was just trying to relate it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I would. That, that's, that's 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 a good question because it definitely is related, and that is one way of doing it and i want people at the end of it especially you as well as everyone else should understand you can address the same question using that but why shouldn't you you know why should you go you know all this way and um, using all these sources um you know what are what are the critical challenges that that kind of the dashboard will not address and if you have to deploy it you know in a in a professional set setups uh, invitation. So yeah, I want to understand. Side, it was a uh, yeah, hard for Streamly mm -hmm. to um, just process the email tasks. So maybe this might solve the problem. In including the also, including so that how much maintenance, how much reliability, durability, um, scalability. So I want you to compare that kind of like dashboard browser just records it sends it to some folder versus with all these setups i want you to think about it so that's great that's a good question okay okay sure. thanks and the next one is that sibitinda or blaze let's say uh, is that sibitinda yeah hello everyone thank you so much Hi. um Testing on the project that we are having to do. Um, I've been reading through and seeing uh, where we are having text to audio, audio to text. What I perceive is that this time around we are handling text and we expect audios, and it is at a large scale. The tasks going to be involved here are uh, handling big data and in real time that is streaming the data so uh, the previous task was well as handling sahili automatic re speech recognition it was um interesting so i have interest for this one already uh, although the tasks ahead are quite uh, seeming big and so I think I will have to invest more time reading through and and hard work 
that's the picture I have. Great. Yeah, I think there are some differences. We are now taking over the wallet now. There we were trying to try to see what has the, what the wallet offers, if I put it that way. Um, so in a way, we are building exactly as you notice. We are building a very large scale um, framework in such a way that if we were to succeed, it will be a game changer in terms of labeling. It could be, yeah, it could provide. So it's it's much more of like trying to set up a system that would go, that would be used at least by a few million people. I would say like a minimum 10 million people have to interact with it and read something and the data has to be captured for this thing to work. And we need to handle such a large system that could be done simultaneously. So that's one part. So I think, yeah, that's great. OK, so Blaze. Um, OK, hi. Uh, hi. I just had a couple of uh, questions, actually, from what I understand how the project is meant to go. We are trying to integrate three basic Let's see services. We have the Kafka, the Apache, uh, the, the, the Airflow, and the Spark. But okay, so I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how we're going to integrate all these three to work as a basic system. But I'm trying to read and understand how that happens. Then also, okay, just for like a basic, like a, a layman's perspective of what you're trying to do, is this like you're trying to create, in quotes, a database where somebody can literally just fetch something, send a, I'm just sending in something, then it detects it, then sends it back as output. That was just trying in layman's language. Yeah, I think so. I think it's very simple from a, if we were just to write it down. It's exactly that's what we want. We want to not depend on a medium on which we show people. We want that medium from wherever medium, we want data to come in. And so basically with a gate, if we just talk about it HTTP, then it will be like, a GET request to an API and gets some well-chosen or randomly chosen text, displays it to a user. It doesn't matter, as I say, to the medium. We don't want to depend on which medium we show it. It's, it could be an app, it could be a game, it could be uh, a web, or it could be a telegram, it could be Slack, it could be anything. And then, then it just, the other person records or verbalize it and that is recorded and has a very basic test and then sent back to the server and that server handles concurrently irrespective of how many instances were want and basically just then it it goes into from that layer we could just go into two passes one pass would be just dump it and create a data lake or then spin a Spark, kind of in the Spark cluster, you do some processing, you do basically Delta Lake, which is again another uh, service that Databricks um, or the creators of Spark has. And from that, you basically create a layer, a transformation layer that can easily be, and ultimately, in the meantime, you could be processing it, it's like live training, with as much samples comes in, or you could again design it in such a way that the same transcription could go back the audio and people to choose to which that to which text it corresponds. That's much more of ensuring the quality, but the system shouldn't change, right? Whether you do it one way or another way, it's basically like it gets something a rich medium, a rich media it gets, and then it gives back either a rich media or some label and and then it kind of recorded in some way and that some way we don't want it to be just because sometimes yeah if we were to use structured data or we, we need to transform it we might choose just not to transform that much and we want to allow the data scientists to get only a clean metadata that tells it and you know helps it to just whatever so 
the decision is but we will stop for this project at the data lake or at the kind of delta layer delta lake layer um but yeah in simple terms it's really just that it's like we want to create a pipeline that goes into a front end goes to back end ultimately reliably data is kind of uh, persisted in a disk in some way and then it should be down the stream it should just be easy for so as while you are working you are thinking about people that are consumers of that data the machine learning and the engineers data scientists or analysts everybody that will use uh, that data but that's that's the part so let me go to if uh, arun is if that's arun or if you want to say it right now then i will give you otherwise i will just go elias azaria and arun but you choose no we can go to i can go after it okay elias and azaria okay 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 thank you uh, I also started by reading the documentation and like, and then trying to refine some of the packages to be used. So the Kafka, though, from what I understand, is like, for example, we might have multiple data sources and multiple services using those data sources and those data might also have to be transformed for each service. So like the communication can get a little bit complicated. So. Kafka can help us, like everyone will communicate with Kafka and that becomes a middle layer. So it will like manage the communication for us and manage the data. So when it comes to Airflow, like it's like an alternate data alternative over Chrome, Chrome Jazz. So like it's used for managing workflows. So like when I then I've tried to continue and like think about the way the project can go. So like two problems I think might come up are first validating the transcriptions. Like so like we can use for Amharic for I think there are multiple data sets we can use for transcription, but they are not really actually that much. So I think we have to mind, find some way of validating that data. The other thing is like after getting the transcription from web browser, I think we can use our already trained models to validate the transcription before like sending it right into our backend. Yeah, I think everything you said is correct. And exactly one other way, just maybe the third alternative of validation is that you use other people to validate. So basically, you reverse the problem. You show them the audio, and you ask them which which of these sentences correspond to it. And that way, um, you kind of get that validation from a user. And another way is exactly just you ask the same question, so the same sentence, two people to, re to read it, or you know, a few people to read it, depending on, of course, how many users you You know, that's, that's optimization. How many are you reaching? Uh, if you are reaching a fewer people, of course, you don't want to waste every single person for anything other than just the transcription. But if you reach more people, you could do that. And as you suggested, then you could try to use your model on the same audio uh, file. If it's read from the same source, it should at least output something similar. So the distance, you can compute the distance. So that would be one. So yeah, but that's exactly, I think it's it's a good way of thinking. And your mention of uh, is also correct. I will I will get into that later. But it's exactly I want you to think exactly like uh, Jerusalem has been thinking about this. You know, the dashboard she built. It's the relations that will help you understand the entire thing. So why should I use such a complex system? Why should I use Airflow? Why should I use like um, you know uh, Spark? And why am I using um, Kafka? So this will help in in cementing your understanding. And it's true. It's a Chrome alternative, a more complex, a more, um, you know, high degree of freedom. Uh, RO. It's just like it does like Chrome um, and more. So that's good. So Azaria and then Arun, I will just go. Okay. Um, uh, so um, I wanted to clarify um, if it's a two-way pipeline that we're actually building. 
um, if the producer um, is actually going to be um, the consumer when using Kafka. Um, because um, I heard that um, the texts are, are actually going to be um, sent to the front end. Uh, so in that case, maybe the web app would be act acting as a consumer. And when sending the audio, is it going to be acting as a producer? Um, and so um, are we going to have uh, uh, the same entity acting as Bose? Um, and also, um, I also heard uh, that um, we're simply going to be building the back end. So are we, how are we going to emulate um, this producer consumer relationship uh, in Kafka? Yeah, just, just because it's simple, I will answer absolutely it's a two way. That means you will create in Kafka two topics or multiple topics. One is for sending, yeah, like so the web app or you know the web browser, the web or the app or anything will just basically get something with a certain ID, and then that is when it's consuming mode, and then in ascending mode or um, in the producer or source mode, then it will send whatever is the opposite. If it is, for example, if it receives a text, it sends back an audio. And if it receives an audio, it sends back either keys like selections. So if it receives like, let's say, JSON that has audio plus some selections, then we send, let's let's say, um, this, the correct or the answered uh, choice, ABC or whatever. And so, yeah, it, it, it acts as both, uh, depending on what you need. And you will definitely need to build a very simple uh, simulator or a web app, basically. I mean, just a simple, call it just a very simple page that will, you will connect to the kind of API you are building. And that's so small enough, I don't think, you, know, you can, if you are in a group, of course, you can distribute the work and build something even relevant that will be used actually to test it. But we do, we, because we want to focus on just the part of this Kafka um, Spark and uh, Airflow. So you are more in, we, at this point, you're more kind of like working on, on that pipeline. But definitely you need to build either a simulator or just a simple web uh, application or a browser that will send and receive uh, from this API. Hopefully that's clear. And so uh, Arun? Just type my question. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. So I would say basically this will give you the entire spectrum, not the technology. So there are multiple technologies. If you have been in the data engineering sense, you might use, you might know so many terms and so many. I think broadly speaking, one can specify the two technologies as the big ones that are coming. So in the past was how was like when he was going to the big a big data era, that was what was coming. You know, Google kind of came up with uh, Google and Yahoo were basically just the two companies. Google wrote this paper, you know, transformed this whole thing. It's basically the entire thing was industry was not handling the, the usual way, which was from the 1980s, was just these databases, right? So warehouses. And that was just a lot more focused on kind of very expensive machines, doing both the machine and the software together. So these different databases and that, and then you do SQL query and that was not working. And that has changed into this Hadoop MapReduce kind of space where now you distribute things. So each of the Hadoop cluster will contain a data. And then on top of that, you have a software like MapReduce that will basically, you can just map and reduce and will just basically, you can do them with those two operations, basically anything um, on that data. And, and then, you know, that comes, but that, that is now considered old. That means that basically it's replaced by MapReduce becomes Spark. So Spark does exactly what MapReduce. And then what becomes um, what becomes the Hadoop becomes everything, including uh, Kubernetes, 
including Docker instances, but the cloud basically, right? So just the cloud opens up that space. What are we doing? We really just, in this week, we are trying to just get all of these the basic elements to make them work together for a target, uh, for a very, very big goal and ambitious. In the form of like, you understand the concepts, you may understand so Snowflake, for example, is a very popular uh, way. It's like the Databricks. Databricks is another way which just basically does on unstructured data. So it will provide you only just some, some way you can transform it before loading. While Snowflake is the usual type of, you know, the, the old style in the new era. So that means like you finally still will have a database, a known kind of warehouse. Um, but but the mentality is the same. Even Snowflake has inside it some some layer called just, I mean, I think, I don't know if it's data data lake or something. I think it's just they bought that and then they, they created this data lake. But on top of that, you do some transformation and still you will load. So the data analysts on top don't see the difference between the old way of living and the new way of living. While Databricks is just creating this a new way of thinking, just the raw data only. Um, and just you, on top of it, you have like Spark and others that will just basically, sorry. Um, so, but the concepts that are tied onto this one, that there is a streaming, it needs to be collected, it needs to be orchestrated, it needs to have pipeline from end to end, and Sorry, that um, someone is trying to call me and I cannot uh, stop it um, before calling, so it might call again. So, so what I am saying, probably I'm just extending it because it's important to give the context, um, is that you are building actually a very end-to-end -end pipeline in the modern sense. We chose slightly the Databricks way of doing, but whether you go to, even if you go to a Snowflake or any other modern, data engineering, you are going to be using a very similar pipeline that you will be, you know, kind of seeing on a cloud, on a distributed way, you receive a message and you send a message and you structure it or you form some form of layer. And on top of that, you, you do some transformation. So you may be doing ELT. So that means like you basically um, you extract just that is basically from the wave, whatever, whatever from the, uh, it could be from a data lake, you extract it and then you, you either transform first. So in that case, you, you get into the, the form of like what I would call the data bricks way, or you transform and load it. So, I'm sorry, you load it and then you transform. That's basically just a snowflake way, or you transform and load it. That's the data bricks way. Um, that you will see. And both of them, whether whichever you do, the concepts that you will learn today will be just basically, you know, transformed or one comes first or, or later, but they are the same. So you will be able to work. If you understand this concept, you will be able to work in any company, whether small or big, um, that you will be able to work and understand the language of data engineering and the methodologies, whether it's Redshift, or whether it's something else, some other tool, whether it's DBT or whether it's anything, you would understand where it falls, in which set of that pipeline it falls. Is it in the producer sense, or is it in the transformation sense, or whether it's in the consumer sense, right? So you will have basically the spectrum captured and the skills that are essential, that basically distributed computing, distributed receiving and distributed kind of sending you pretty much you'd get an overall shot of them and of course the different technologies later you will specialize wherever you work but i would say you you cover the entire space of data engineering as it stands today so hopefully around that addresses but if you if you want to add anything yeah. um just go no i think that's obviously a comprehensive answer i just want to underline for everyone um, please finish these 10 days having understood how everything fits together. You don't need to be an expert in all of the different components. Our promise to you is that we help get you job ready. 
Um, and we believe very strongly that people who understand uh, this week's challenge, even if they didn't do every line of coding themselves, they worked with other team members. Um, this is a really good preparation for data engineering, data engineering careers. And it, um, it follows very closely um, what industry is looking for. So I, I still don't understand why 20 people are missing in this call, but ideally, if people are serious about wanting to get a job, take this week's challenge seriously. Great. So I will get back to you, Milky, but again, if you haven't spoken in the last one week, raise your hand. Even if you don't have anything to say, just raise your hand so that I can, you know, we can start speaking. Just get the habit of it. So, and I don't want anyone to continue into tomorrow without speaking today or without speaking the last one week. Okay. So I am strongly, if you haven't raised, then just raise it at any time when you feel comfortable, but don't go without raising your hand today. Okay. So I will just answer a few of the so a few of the questions mubarak i will get back to you so milk and mubarak the next one the next when i um part but just keep raising your hand if i forgot it um but so i, I just want to answer just from jakinda's question to different again zalalems and uh, from bani as well i just want to get that clarity where just uh, you know making it clear how what is kafka what is this what is that the different services and the, their separations I think one way usually to understand is that if you were to write it yourself, you know, where do you start? What is the equivalent package in Python, for example, you know, that does that. So, for example, cron was one thing that was raised uh, by Elias, and I think that's, you know, one thing that you would do in any way to automate if you want to keep it in time, something to run um, in, in a repeated, some kind of regular times, right? So I would say Kafka is really doing just some queue, just some queue scheduling. Any queue you, you know, in Python it's just called queue, but um, there are like basically just also, even the JavaScript uh, engine has just this type of queue or even your memory, how it does handle things like when you, you know, when it, when it runs your, your code, what it does is it just goes across your, you know, if you know a little bit of like this, uh, parallelized computing or you know some kind of asynchronous uh, computing you basically know that it needs to have a stack where it needs to put something so that's basically a type of queue and there is a loop that goes and kind of computes this thing and then for parallel computing just that will be handled by if it's uh, you know like by a browser or by some asynchronous way of like you know, that handles that and basically it synchronizes it computes something when it finishes it puts it back to the queue and in into into the part and then like that's how it's computed so a simple queue system is what kafka is doing nothing nothing fancy and and the model it does is called subscribe it's called publish subscribe basically someone publishes and someone subscribes and that is the model for many many things including SNS in Amazon, many of the clouds offer email sending or any subscription, it could be notifications, any service that you know in a modern era that uses a very similar thing, you know, publish and subscribe. All the events, all the uh, notifications you get in your mobile, in whatever email, it uses a very similar thing. Somebody publishes with a, um, you know, some system, publishes with uh, some topic, and another one who subscribes to that will receive that. Um, and that's it, right? So it's just Kafka is very simple in that sense. It just does it so parallelized, so distributed, it can handle 1 million sec messages per second. That's hard to achieve. That is really the kind of the throughput is high. And because, as I say, subscribe and, you know, uh, publish and subscribe is just the backbone of everything that you know in a modern era, whether it's a feed or whether it's you know, anything else, then with Kafka, you can do everything basically of that form that requires this thing. So, and what you send and what you receive is, it doesn't matter because in a computer, everything is just zeros and ones. So in that case, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a message, whether it's just a simple text, whether it's a number, whether it's an image, whether it's a video, 
whether it's anything, right? Because just for the computer, it's the principle that's more important. And you know, then you just basically plug in just for the data pipe in the pipeline. Uh, you will have like, I don't know, an image um, engine, whatever engine for that, how it will handle if it needs to do handle, but it doesn't need to handle, it just needs to only, uh, sometimes you can even just put the actual file in a certain place and you just only send the link and therefore just, you know, and that's what's recommended in Kafka. Most of the time, don't pass too much per time, more than one second, uh, sorry, more than one megabyte, that's the default. And that's, again, I put a reference on that, how how you can handle large files. But one way is basically as like, as usual, you put just on a some really, like basically just some, some file, some folder, the entire thing, but the, 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 the file names are kind of passed and managed through Kafka, right? So that could be the case. So Kafka is just that. You could implement it if you don't want that that very robust and, you know, kind of scalable system, you could have handled it with a normal, as uh, as um, Jerusalem was saying, with just a simple, you know, just put the file into, into something. And, and if you are smart, you can add just on top of that some asynchronous thing so that two people, three people can write in the same place um, simultaneously. And you use just some pipe, uh, some queue system, and that's it. Like first, you know, it's called FIFO. For example, just first come, first serve, basically, um, or first come, first out, and that basically just will have. So that is Kafka. And then Chrome, we already said, it is uh, Paki Arrow. But the most important part of the things are, because it even this orchestration, you can act it, you can use it as just also a message thing. So you can actually turn Kafka into some kind of management, right? Because you can just, you know, when you finish something, you put it into the, the source and then like that. So by just some clever redesigning, you can use Kafka like Arrow as well sometimes, but it's not designed for that. So Arrow provides a much better, especially tasks, task scheduling. You can con communicate the input of one, the output of one task can go to the input of another task and you can have like operators or executors that will basically either op, you know, the operators operate on, an, on different, if it's a Python operator, it just basically knows or you tell it how it, how it does, how it computes Python, just give it only a Python um, function or a Python something, and then just computes that, runs it very naturally. So Arrow just basically orchestrates anything, like mixed language, anything, it doesn't matter, as long as you use just like whatever necessary operator, it does basically it's it, it creates a very complex pipeline and orchestration handles like okay when you achieve that go to this one split that one and do that and after that it's like you know go to kafka and fetch this thing you can do anything so for that reason arrow you will use it to orchestrate to schedule your tasks and then spark is exactly where where you need the distribution when kafka comes you can actually use if you need to clean if you need to do some pre-processing transformation, you know, before you save it into something, let's say into load, load basically refers in ETL, E is for extraction, T is for transform, and L is for load. Usually when we say load, it means anything that, that would be like, it's usually the SQL, like the database, but it could be just even a file, but that's a cleaned output. So that means like something that is clean that, that can be consumed uh, and easily whatever, is in a structured way put into that whatever called warehouse that you load it into a warehouse. So basically that transformation on the fly in a streaming and in a distributed manner can be done by Spark. And that's what you would do, for example, cleaning, if there is like noises just be between here and there, if you need to do something. This transformation element is really to make it suitable for um, downstream consumers data scientists, machine learning engineers, analysts. And you must, as a data engineer, always, your interest is not usually insight, whatever, but making lives of these people easy. If it is a dashboard builder, like an analyst, you know, doesn't need to reprocess the data. They want, they want to find it as close as possible to what they consume, right? So the transformation element will help them. Uh, and then because you load it, that means you put it in a warehouse, then they can easily query it and they get it. So that's the part of the transformation and the query, like the loading, 
and then the first part, the Kafka part, is basically just to get the data from the source, the extraction element. OK, so hopefully I answered most of, most of the questions, right? So then I will go back now to the people who have asked questions. Uh, I think was that Milky and then um, who was that? Mubarak. So Milky and then Mubarak. Yeah, um, I'm kind of confused about uh, the project. Aren't we kind of building a data collecting API and uh, an, an extraction system, kind of? Like we, yeah, we are. Yeah, like th there are some sample texts that we need to be that that need audio files, right? So yeah. we will display the text uh, the text to the user to the person that uh, inputs the audio file for us. Then the he records the audio file and send it send it to us, right? Yeah. So after That's processing, simple. yeah, after processing, we store it. So yeah. whenever someone asks us for this training data, uh, like extracting this data, we provide those data. Yeah, if, if you load it, yeah, they get it basically exactly. They query it from that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, simple. But, That's the whole yeah, simple. That's simple as that. I was kind of confused when someone asked, like, uh, if, they, if they produce the, uh, if we already have the text, what, why do we need the model? like uh, to validate the audio. But what if somebody just, you, you show them, you know, um, I love you, and the other person, this. Oh. How do you know? How do you know that this is, the text is the audio? <laughs> That's well, exactly. Well, well, real life is hard. Yeah, we're trusting the users. Exactly. So real life is hard, and you don't want to trust. You want to make sure you do your work, right, as a data scientist, because at a large scale, if it's, you know, 100 people or even 1,000 people, you would just go and check every audio, and you will make sure that, you know, that's the case. But if you are asking 30 million people or 40 million people, whatever number of million people, if you are thinking as enterprise, that is not an option. So you need to quantify even the noise. That means how often do you get these things, you know, and that is called validation. And you basically then finally, when you release it to the public, you know, all this data that you validated and that validation tells you like, I don't know, you know, 10% of the time there are some errors, but we try to clean. So we expect like, you know, the error to go down to 5% or 1%. And you know, like all that would come from the validation. Okay, so we have step be before uh, providing the final data, the clean data to the users. I think exactly. So these are all as a data engineer, <coughs> you are you are responsible for the quality uh, and availability, robustness of the data, and you would do your work seriously, especially in enterprise sense. Means usually enterprise. When we say enterprise, it means it needs to be reliable, like uh, industries work in that reliable format. That means you do your work well. It doesn't matter to do even just a tiny part. If it takes you like a year, you do it. If it means like inventing a new tool, you do it. In an industry and enterprise, the mindset is not like, oh, it's just because it's a small problem, let's do it. No, enterprise is becomes it's like everybody does their job well. And therefore, that's how the system goes better. And if not, they fall, and therefore other people, whoever does it better, will replace. And so your task is not about anything except just providing the highest quality achievable with your, within your capacity. And all these complications, the reason is, is exactly because we needed to be scalable, reliable, uh, and all that. I think most of the time, the same things can be done by just a simple 10 line of code. But when you want to be, when you want to add the constraint of reliable, scalable, then you may need to go, you know, spending a million dollar for the same simple thing. And that's where we are. Like we are, you know, we have been going upstream to just industry level thinking and enterprise level thinking where quality is and scale is, you know, where we are heading. 
that means we are thinking in that mindset hope that's clear yeah uh, finally like the validation can be made by uh, uh, can be done by physically right someone can do it personally yeah but it's like i think that's you know if you have like millions it's not physical so usually what one of i think what Elias suggested and what i'm also at first just you you could ask again we don't ask you now yet but we want to allow we want you to think that the subscription so the source and the basically the producer and consumer so the app or whoever whichever is in the front end sh will be acting as both if it is acting as both then it basically means that you are able to um you, you can use it for validation that means you can send it to some people just the audio and ask them the you know to choose which one it corresponds to and then the other way you you send it so that's and then another one is like using spark you can validate through like some of your model you can ask it like okay transcribe it and does it match closely to what i sent them to read and that is another way of so it's it's um you know you become creative on how you validate but the first part why you think you need to think right now the validation is when you design the api basically you want to think that way just so that you don't limit yourself yeah i'll make it scalable then yeah. okay awesome thank okay so then uh, i will go no worries uh, i will go to mubarak was that mubarak and then to abraham <laughs> So Abra Mubarak, if you have any question or if you want me to ask you something, it's fine. The whole point, as I said, is just raise your hand. So go on. Oh, hello. Hi, Mubarak. Hi, boys. I, I do not really have much question because I haven't gone through the document very well. Just at least the question. So yes, I almost understood much of what we have to do this week great okay so let me just let me ask you have you done anything related to you know someone publishes someone subscribes anything in that format no not at all okay and have you done some kind of orchestration or you know task scheduling yes yes i've done that before so just if you tell us a little bit, I can give you a similarity between that and what we do as well. So what what kind of task scheduling were you did you did you have an experience? Hello. Hello. So what what form of experience on task scheduling or orchestration? Hello, Mubarak. Okay, the audio seems to not work. So I will go to Abraham. Then, Abraham. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, actually, uh, I just started reading uh, the challenge document. So uh, I haven't read the whole document yet. Uh, in the challenge document, uh, it says apply structured streaming. Yep. So uh, my question is, uh, do we have to create uh, an API by our own, or can we use a separate library like uh, Spark Streaming? Uh, because yes. Streaming provides us a data streaming API. Uh, and also, uh, I am a little bit confused on uh, structured streaming data and continuously flowing streaming data. So uh, I don't have any idea on uh, these things. Yeah, so definitely it is you, like the API in some way, it's both Kafka as well as Spark streaming would act, can be used, right? So we're just using like as, a, as a, an entry point or like as exit point at the moment as like uh, source and sync Kafka, but then immediately we would use also uh, 
Spark streaming to actually do the processing live, right? It's just that Kafka has a much better handling on that. That's why we just put in front Kafka. And Kafka then acts as like the Kafka basically uh, sources will just send in our API basically. Yeah, it's like you can wrap it around, but you can use it also directly, just the different brokers that, that you would use and the different topics as just basically your API uh, part, right? So you could, basically that's what Kafka is acting uh, on at the moment. It will, it will act as, you know, you basically send to it. But if you want a richer API, you can also build around it. That means you actually only expose some other API that basically monitors acts in between your Kafka and your front end services that then even if, you know, it's not a topic, it's asking something else, like, you know, it will provide some other services, but if it's asking get and then you would just basically directly connect it to the Kafka one. So you can use anything for that. I think that's, you know, that's what we want is just as simple as first, just you stream something, you know, you, be, you get a source, you, you process it through Kafka, and then you connect that Kafka to also to um, uh, Spark, and you basically do some transformation, and then that will then that transformation directly provides you the, you know, that you will use a Delta Lake to create some data bricks form of the, the data lake, and then yeah, that's kind of the loading aspect at, at that at that aspect, and um, yeah, I think I that that hopefully answers Abraham. It's you're using exactly that Kafka as an API, but you can, on top of that, you can build, if you want, your other API, you know, some other REST or GraphQL API. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, is there anyone who hasn't spoken the last week and who wants to speak? Who wants, just raise your hand. I mean, I think we, we have to get used to, even if we have nothing, we help each other. If you raise and if you don't have a question or if you don't know how to think or to ask, I'll just help you to what you could have asked. And this way, it's just a win-win that at every occasion, we practice just touching that, that the hand. So, and you should practice between now and the end that you are able to at least participate in a, in a meeting once. Um, when it's, at least like within a few days you at least say something you don't just get in a call and you exit without saying anything i think that would be that's the thing that we are trying to reduce so much is that everybody at least within a couple of days have asked it or gave a comment or something um because in work environment it's only then you will be noticed that you exist so okay if there are no questions, I think we, we are probably way over time. So I will stop it here. But hopefully that you have a starter understanding of the project to start now discussing with your own group and you know form the group today as soon as possible. Get to it. I think it's exciting and definitely this is this is something your mindset needs to change. It's hard. I can tell you that I haven't changed overnight. It took me, I don't know. 10, 20 years, unless you get into this, you are thrown into this kind of problem, you don't understand sometimes. You, it's, it's hard to understand why you should invent all these tools just to build something that you could have written in 10, in 10 lines of Python. So sometimes the conviction and understanding can only come if you work on it and explore the challenge and compare and relate, you know, uh, this thing. So be, be kind of honest to yourself and find questions that will that you could ask within your own group and when we have a meeting because this is game changer in many many ways not only just for the skills but the way of thinking way of thinking big and industrial and enterprise great um, products and thinking so yeah so then have a good afternoon the rest of afternoon hopefully you will get busy and you will have more questions uh, when we schedule for the daily meetups. So we'll just follow the week four format where you we just, again, talk for 15 minutes with each group to monitor 
the kind of progress and if there is any blocker and if there's anything you can help uh, like that so within your group please just be active and take this advantage as to mean you are leaving the normal mode of working into enterprise mode of working and that will basically set you for whatever you do whatever embark you embark on your career whether it's your personal project or in an industry this will just help you to get where you want to be great so cheers cheers everyone i'm gonna stop now the recording